we got to talk about this news here, courtesy of RA, regarding a new London club that's opening. And I think most of us are kind of upset about this sort of stuff because it's like, Jesus Christos, man, when would this end? So this is courtesy of RA. I said, London is getting a new 15,000 capacity venue in a former Ikea. I'm not sure about you, but I feel like the last thing we need is a 15,000 capacity venue <laughs> in London. I swear to God, we need smaller spaces in more places. Like I think I said during like the peak of like, you know, fold when it kind of first opened, that might have been like 2018, 2019, I think. I'm not really too sure, right? But I think I remember saying when that first play, when it opened, I think one of my reviews when I was flipping drunk and high and stuff and I was super ex happy that I was able to go and blah, blah, blah and basically crying about it. I remember saying to myself, oh, you know what they should do actually? They should they should possibly do a thing. Yeah, I think this is the one. Yeah, 2018 it opened because I went to the first dance. I'm checking my phone now. The first fold party I went to was two, August 18th, 2018. I remember when I went there, I said, oh, what they should do going forward, because the whole idea behind Ford was that it's going to be the first 24-hour club in London, which obviously it's not now because, you know, London fucking permits and whatever else probably changed it. But it's still one of the only places open until 6 so a.m. in the morning. So most likely what I said would be a good thing is that if they had a version of Ford in every part of London, so like north, you know, north, south, east, west, whatever, have one or two in those locations so that what would happen is that you wouldn't have people having to trek all the way from west north or south up to fucking drop fold but instead you'd create all these little local scenes around these places that are like you know for i think fold might be 500 to 700 capacity venues so it's like small is small enough to have up and coming people play every Sunday at Unfold, but also big enough to hold, you know, Richie Horton label night or something. I think that's a perfect sort of blend. And then what you do, you'd keep a place like fucking, you know, print works, which I don't give a fuck about, but you keep a place like that open so that when you do as a DJ sort of like graduate from like the minor leagues, you have a platform to play a bigger place to play. That's what should happen, but we don't have enough of those. But of course, you know, for some reason, in the same way London loves a good fucking food truck market, we love a good fucking, you know, um, listening bar, we love a good, I don't know, what else do we love? We love all these fucking things, but one thing we don't love as a country or as a fucking city, we don't love to fucking give people and enc or encourage people to open up a new and interesting club spaces that seems to be off the table but if you've got another burger joint to open up if you've got another fucking pizza place to open up if you've got another fusion japanese place they're gonna lay the fucking red carpet for you but there that you open a nightclub suddenly with these fucking permits and restrictions come at you it's annoying anyway let's continue it says run by broadwick live drum sheds were open in tottenham in 20 in september the, the new 50 capacity fifteen thousand capacity like imagine how big that is can you imagine what 15,000 phones look like in the air as fucking, um, what's his face? As Jamie Jones, like, you know, builds up some terrible tech house drop. Can you imagine what that looks like? Not to be confused with Broderick Live's former venue of the same name called Drum Sheds. This new space is situated in a former Ikea in Tottenham. The 680, 608 square foot arena will host dance music events as well as fashion shows, set builds and more. Um, the program is still TBA. Drum Sheds has joined other large scale venues operated by Broadwick Live, including the Beams, Printworks, Depot in Manchester and nearby Drum Sheds um, shut the spot in January of last year. The quote. Broadwick's mission has always been to build brands that deliver unrivaled live experiences that create real impact to director strategy, Simeon Aldred. We want drum sheds like all spaces to create, uh, we create, sorry, to be new centers of cultural gravity that provide the basis for human connection, a connection that people crave now more than ever. Don't get me wrong, that sounds a bit chat GPT-ish, but I believe them. From what they've done with those former venues are listed above, Beams, Printworks and shit, you can't deny Broadwick Live know how to run a venue. They know how to run a big space. They know how to program them. They know how to, you know, just, you know, just the production side of it, right? I can't imagine how much work it takes to ha make sure the lights stay on in places like that. Like the sound sounds semi-decent. The equipment works. Like it must be a tall order. And the amount of staff, the sheer amount of staff that work under their banner, it must be insane. So credit to them for doing that because I still think it's a skill, you know, 
for as much as I would love for all places to be dingy, exposed brick wall warehouses, you know, with crazy fucking, you know, wall of speakers and shit. Let's be real and say there also needs to be a space for these kind of normy places that people can go to where if you want to have a food, you know, you want to have a hot dog, you can have it. You can have a dance, you can have a nice cocktail, you can sit down, there's good Wi-Fi and shit. You need that sort of stuff to exist, right? It looks good on the Instagram, does need to exist. But I just feel like nowadays, London's kind of been known for that for a long time. We've kind of done that very well. But I think one thing we haven't done very well is really invest in the long-term future of these kind of small to medium-sized clubs from like 200 to 750 capacity in various places in London. Because at the moment, as great as Fold is, you know, it still has its issues, it still has its problems, it's not perfect, but there should be ones or twos of those in each part of London to kind of, I feel like, ease the pressure on places like that so that they can take more chances. Because at the moment, you can't really take a lot of chances if you're forward because you have to pay the bills, you have a, you know, you have to keep your punters happy and shit, and just you're not going to meet people's expectations. But I feel like if you spread the load out a little bit across of London, then maybe maybe the burden of responsibility can fall on different people we'd hope so anyway that would be the major hope on that one um let's scroll down here what more pictures on the inside it looks very shiny loads of glass as you can see here loads of metal and stairs it's all looking very bleak and boring to be completely honest not the kind of place that i would probably go to anytime soon myself but i'm probably not the target demographic so it doesn't really matter but the you know the building itself if you've been in london you know what the former ikea spot in tottenham looks like i went there once to buy some stuff for the house and shit it kind of is what it is um and you know it's gonna be clearly a good place to kind of do music with because i think usually these places are well heat insulated which i i think again talking about my house here that would do really well for fucking sound so it's definitely gonna sound amazing just because of whatever was host housed in there before but pff, the last thing i want to do is be in a fifteen thousand capacity venue mate the last thing i want to be there is around that many people it's just too much and just in general most likely if you're going to have a fifteen thousand capacity venue the programming is not going to be the most you know not 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 to my taste anyway it's gonna to have to appeal to normies and you know i'd rather jump off the nearest cliff to be honest and there's not many cliffs in the uk so you can just imagine my um you know how <laughs> how much i don't want to do that anyway let's move on from that 